Well, it's a shank of the afternoon, and we are in the middle of my radio shop, an antique clock repair shop, Callaway Clock and Antique Radio Service dot com. On the bench is a chassis from an Elmer Dickinson Blues in the background too. On the bench is a chassis from an RCA K80, chassis number 415C, brought in for an estimate on uh, some possible repair work. Lady has a booth in a local antique mall. A lot of people have shown interest in the radio, but uh, nobody wanted to plug it in, and unless you are ready to commit immediate suicide, I don't think you'd want to plug this in either. Let's take a look at the uh, cabinet. I have worked on a lot of consoles. I've owned a few. But I don't believe I've ever seen one as stunning as this. This is a 1940 RCA. I think the top is covered with a doily. Not a scratch on it. The speaker cloth is immaculate. The burl is good on the uh, veneer. Just a beautiful, beautiful radio. It's almost like uh, we're not standing in my radio shop and it's 2015, but we're actually standing in the RCA Victor Dealers showroom getting ready to take delivery of this. It even has the push button, full complement of radio station designations. Milwaukee, and uh, Chicago radio stations. So with that, oh yeah, by the way, um, I did purchase a new toy for the bench. This URM25D, United States Navy signal generator. A friend of mine has the 25F, and after he let me use it for a weekend, I was so impressed with it that I bought this. This I bought from an eBay seller, Cornelius Connie, who sells a lot of high-end, highly reconditioned equipment such as this. And some uh, nice Hewlett Packard stuff. So with that, uh, basically what I'm going to do with this chassis is to check the uh, antenna and uh, oscillator coils. Uh, we're going to first of all just tune through the AM band, see if we can pick up some stations, see if there's anything on short wave, and uh, go from there. This is kind of interesting. RCA provided this for technicians. This is uh, a ring of degrees that goes from zero up past 230. And this is actually the drum, or this is attached to the drum of the radio, the tuning drum. And then the alignment instructions, let's say... Um, uh, an alignment specification is six megacycles on the medium wave band. I don't know if it is, but this is just for example. Uh, next to the six megacycles is a degree. And you simply rotate the disc on the tuning drum to a specific degree and see uh, and proceed to do your alignment. And we'll be doing that here in just a bit. They also suggest making this uh, this pointer and reference, referencing it at zero. So let's start out on the AM band and see if um, we can pick anything up. This is a 6F6 double output stage, by the way. And I think we can just turn this by hand pretty easily because the uh, rubber plunger that holds the dial for fine-tuning on the medium and short wave bands is disengaged. So you would just push in like so and turn. We'll do it quickly. There's our local station. And uh, there's the SS Tram. So we know that the uh, AM oscillator and AM antenna are working, so let's uh, proceed to check the AM oscillator and antennas on the upper bands. 
the uh, instructions call for in order to start with the uh, shortwave band, which we'll do. I'm just going to quickly see if I can get anything on it. I, I'm not certain that I can. I do have the antenna on the roof of the building connected, but uh, no, we're not getting any any kind of response except static on the shortwave band. So I'll disconnect the antenna. Tip the radio up on the end and proceed to see if we can get any kind of response from the signal generator. Take a look at our specification here. So let's set the signal generator for 15 megacycles. And take a look at the frequency counter, which you probably can't see very well. I can. Been a long day today. I'm a little hoarse. So you have to pardon me. Oh. That'll be close enough for our testing purposes. <clears throat> 15 megacycles calls for 191 degrees on our wheel and uh, which is right about there. And we're going to use <clears throat> a 0.01 capacitor connected to the input grid of the 6SA7. Attempt to get a response out of that. So I'll connect to ground and uh, go right up here to uh, pin 8 on the 6SA7. Connect to it, which is this capacitor right here. To my tuning condenser just a little. For some reason, I'm not hearing anything. I am now. Well, our alignment is off, but at least we know that the oscillator and the antenna working on the short wave band. So I'm going to disconnect my signal generator from the capacitor, the 0.01 capacitor, and uh, we'll take a look at the medium wave band, and that's calling for 2.44 megacycles. And with that, the 2.44 megacycles corresponds to 115 degrees on our alignment wheel. Let's see if we can pick anything up. After I hook up the um, 0.01 capacitor. Oh, I'm hearing something there. There it 
is, so we know that our oscillator and antenna are working uh, on both the medium wave and short wave bands. One thing I'm going to do too, while I've got you here, is um, check the uh, voltage at the cathode of the 5Y3 rectifier. The specification on the schematic is 345 volts. Go to pin 8 on the uh, rectifier. We got a spark. So we've got 353 volts DC on the um, 5Y3. So we are well above spec. The radio probably is going to be a good performer. Definitely needs an alignment, uh, probably should be completely rebuilt. And at this point, we'll stop and talk to the customer and see what she wants to do. Oh, getting on near quitting time. I think I'll go home, throw uh, some burgers on the grill, pop a cold one, and uh, be back with you again soon. Have a good one, and straight ahead.